As we jump into the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 breakdown, we need to talk about exactly what was moving this market. Because as you can see, this morning we were moving up into the pre-market and after hours of yesterday, we were moving up basically until 10 a.m. and then we got shot down. Now I'm gonna tell you what I see happening over the next few days and specifically what's been taking place over the past two weeks and what we've been doing here on the channel as well as the upcoming news that will be announced that is going to impact the market most likely negatively, again, we're unbiased here, but we have to overall give you a viewpoint of what we see happening based on this news because this week alone, I told you, we have 22 Fed speeches alone, and today was one of them, and that's most likely what caused a lot of this downside, and in my opinion, may in fact break the back here which will start pushing us down. Now, before I get into that, I have to ask you to consider doing two things, liking and subscribing every single day. I'm making videos for you, breaking down the market, so you are prepared to trade in this market as well. As you can tell, the market just closed. So we need to jump into this immediately. And before I go into that, I have to tell you right now, right now, the Discord, we are doing a 15% off for your first month right now, enter fall 15, and you'll get 15% off for your first month. But let's get into the video. So as we get in here, I want to talk about where we were yesterday. I was really excited about the close yesterday. As you can see here, we ended up closing the day around lows and then you ended up popping up, of course, as you can see over the overnight session, basically into the beginning of this day for the first basically hour and 30 minutes, you were on your upside push. Now, obviously, we ended up dropping down here and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to start with the big news first. It was Fed Kashkari, Kashkari, how do you even pronounce the name? No offense, whatever. But this is the main reason. He's known as the hawk if there ever was one on the Fed. And he's very supportive and was pushing the agenda of being aggressive with the rate hikes. And they say they're going to continue to do them. And there's no sign of cutting them in 2023. I'll have this link down below if you want to read about it. Uh, Reuters probably is one of the best news sources for the stock market if you're interested. And it, typically most of this stuff is free as well from them you can also pay but again not sponsored by them but solid information i use them a lot here you can go deep into that if you want i'm not going to spend too much time on that right here i cover all the fundamental stuff in discord and on twitter so if you want to follow them on twitter that's where you can get more of that information and updates but i want to talk about what happened on the day and why i wasn't really panicking now I've talked a lot about my trades, and I told you yesterday I had spy puts, ended up getting out of those. Those hit around $11 on the day. We got in initially around $8.40. They dropped down below $7 this morning, ended up averaging down, sold near 11 Have a little bit, few runners, but still, this is what we're doing right now. Obviously, right now, what's happening? You can see you pushing up and getting rejected from our key level we keep marking, right? You get above 11.5, you can't hold, you push back down. This is a rinse and repeat cycle over and over. And you can see you get up here and then buyers stall and sellers take control. Very, very strong reactions each time we've tested this, right? One, two, you could say here as well, but you can see very strong negative reactions pushing you back down towards lows. In fact, on SPY, I want to talk about this as well. You actually ended up breaking 52 week lows. Yes. Yes, yes. So let's go to the one week chart so you can see. You can actually tell right there you broke below and made a new low on SPY. So I want all this just to be out there so you can see what's really happening here. Now, I talked about IWM, QQQ, and I said SPY was one I liked because I like the way the contracts moved, and they did very, very well for us today. So that's really good news overall there as well. Going into ES, ES has not, eh, you have slightly broken below. You can see here as well, this is your S&P 500 futures really going on here. You can see you're operating down here and you are preparing, in my opinion, you are preparing for that next breakdown. And I'm gonna be watching this. You can see you retested lows, rejected, and it looks like, in my opinion, more downside wants to come. Across the board, you've seen a lot of hawkish behavior from the Fed and overall from our government as well. So that's what we have to be looking at as well here as we're looking here. And I want everyone to know my overall targets. We have a next level around 357 roughly. And then from there, in my opinion, I am again, this I might get some hate for this. I don't really know, but I like to just be transparent with you guys. My overall target here for this downside push, and you might get more, but it has been and will remain pre-COVID highs around 340 all the way to 342 roughly. That's going to be my range to be watching out for, okay? Uh, you're going to have a few ranges in between here, but just know this is my big level, my key area I am targeting over the next few weeks, and, and that's not going to change, so just know that. So that's what we're looking at there. 
Next up, we're going to be looking at specifically in Q, and this is really what I want to focus a lot here because we're really on our way down here, and, and I believe we could hit this in the next two, possibly three weeks if we have the right stuff happen in the market, enough negative overall sentiment, right? Now, this is your pre-COVID highs as well, but I want to start talking about stuff that's been happening. I've been mentioning some previous videos as well. I want to step away from really the indexes because I cover this so much and you all know I'm already bearish. You know nothing's really going to change there. But the big thing I want to talk about is what's happening with our big stocks. For instance, Microsoft, right? Breaking below. You've already hit almost our key level down at 232. Next up, Meta. You've already These are all making 52-week lows already and that kind of led the breakdown. Meta, look at that. You're already smashing down through 2020 lows. This is COVID lows, people, and you're pushing back down even further down to 2019 lows. Man, if this doesn't scream danger in the market, I don't really know what will. AMD, the semiconductor industry, getting destroyed. You haven't seen lows like this since prior to 2020, okay? You're almost down to those pre-COVID highs as well. You're getting there in a hurry as well. NVIDIA, getting crushed, pushing down, almost back down there as well. You start breaking below 117. We start talking about more pain all the way down to locally 70 to $80. So as we just continue to go down this list, you'll see all the pain. But I want to hide the good parts of the market as well. As far as Apple, some of these stronger stocks, Apple, it's trying to hold this range. You know, this is a key level, this 152 range. But look, you're trying to stay in the game. And if and you compare this to some of the other stocks, you know, it is holding up fairly well, right? Same thing with Tesla. It's trying to hold up. You've seen some decline here, but you're trying. These are some of your stronger stocks. Amazon as well. But Amazon, even so, is getting crushed here based on these inflation numbers and the projections that will continue to come out. Now, we've gone over... The indexes, obviously, I see downside coming. I'll break those down a little bit more here in a sec. I've gone over the big stocks, which, in my opinion, justify the fact of coming lower, the fact that they're already breaking below their previous lows back in June. Now I want to go into, again, junk bonds, the yields, the dollar, because these were big indicators today for more downside, and it was really just the writing on the wall. So I want that to be very clear as well. And then we're going to go into cheddar flow and book map to close it out. As we jump in here, I want to talk about specifically what was happening again on the book. And this has been one of the best overall viewpoints of what's happening and kind of leading us into each day as well. Looking at volume, looking at big shorts or overall buying on the market, right? And <clears throat> you can see that you're getting, right, number of buyers, quote unquote, towards the upside. So people keep saying that, and I've seen this a lot on social media, that Everyone on Twitter, everyone on YouTube is bearish, bearish, bearish. But if I really go back to the past two, three weeks, I saw a lot more bulls on the market, in my opinion, than I saw bears. And I think the CVD does a really good overall look of showing this because it shows a lot of the small buyers as well hidden kind of in the market. So that's why you'll see the CVD turn green is you're seeing a lot of these smaller buyers trying to buy here. That's why it will maintain green because there's an overall more buyers than there are sellers. Again, I'm talking about the number of people setting orders. I'm not talking about the size of the orders. And But again, you're seeing a bulk of this movement, again, with the blue line, which is our hidden order book and our icebergs, right? What are we seeing? Sell side, short, short, short short all day long, especially into the end of the day once again, specifically when you're seeing bounces or when you're seeing the shorts start stacking back into the market. And I don't find that to be a coincidence, okay? I want to make that very clear. I don't find that to be a coincidence because it continues to play out time and time and time again here, right? So then when we go over to Cheddar Flow, this is my next big area I need to watch for. QQQ coming in here. Actually, I'm gonna refresh it real quick. We'll go to spy here in a second. I'll look at QQQ again. A lot more puts being bought near the mid and end part of the day. The morning part, I, I'm really not too interested in the beginning of the day unless you're seeing a move to the upside and then massive amounts of puts flowing in because then that tells me that they're just not being fooled and they're just buying more for that downside, which we continue to see going into spy again. A large majority of these orders again are coming in 
One, they're slowing down for October. I want to highlight that. They're going a little bit more dated, which is even worse because now they're moving from October into November. We've seen the open interest skyrocket for October as well. It's it's just at astronomical numbers. It's crazy. It's almost out of hand at this point. That needs to be known out there. Two, now we're seeing it roll over into November, which sets the tone for a really bad end of the year on the overall market, right? Now, this is just my viewpoint, what I'm looking at, what the numbers are telling me. This is in no way to scare anyone. Do whatever you gotta do, do your own DD. Don't just listen to me. You need to, you need to do your own research for yourself, right? That's what I wanna say about that. So when I'm looking here, I anticipate more pain here. I anticipate more downside based on what's happening. Now, just in the technicals here, going into you know, the NASDAQ specifically, you are struggling to get back over that weekly open. It's struggling. Two, in my opinion, you're trying to get a flag going on here. You could you could kind of draw this out a little bit wider, but it's looking like it wants to continue back towards that downside, okay? I see more downside. As you're coming back down here, in my opinion as well, the balances are getting weaker as you're testing this range. For instance, right, I wanna highlight, when we tested this range, look how strong the seller stepped back in, right? Look how strong the seller stepped back in over and over. And now, on the contrary, buyers were stepping in quick, stepping in quick, stepping in quick. Over and over, they were stepping back in. But now, look, this morning, slower. Right now, slower. They're allowing you to make new lows. They're allowing you to sit down there and consolidate on those lows longer. This, in turn, tells me that it's getting weaker as a support. I want that to be known. I want to be crystal clear as well of what I'm looking at there. So that has to be known on the market and worrisome. Now, again, I wouldn't be grabbing shorts for myself down here. I'm not grabbing any shorts right here. I have a few positions left over, but I'm not grabbing new positions down here. I'm looking for a possible. I have to be conservative. I have to be greedy with myself. I have to be willing to miss a trade right in order to set myself up for the right trade right because again you're going to hear me say this over and over here on the channel our goal is to reduce risk at all cost right so that means we're not looking to buy the lows we're looking to buy at resistance that's what we want to do that's how we've become so successful here right that's what we aim to do is do not try to switch the formula. Use the same formula as long as it continues to work and make you money, right? Going over it in SPY. SPY is looking worse. Why? Why specifically? Look, you are basically consolidating and getting rejected at your previous lows. This is a major concern for me. This has more downside potential in my opinion. I'm seeing people all over social media post absolute nonsense and they're not looking at the fundamentals of what's happening here and it has to have you concerned. And again, that leads over to J and K. What's happening here? You saw that bounce this morning. Everyone was like, oh, look, we're bouncing. Well, guess what? J and K dumped the entire time you continued to go up on the market. What did that tell me? That it was a risk off environment. They did not want to have risk on the market. This was setting up for more shorts to stack back in, which in turn, it makes total sense. You've gone down straight through your previous low that you had back in June, and you're going even faster. That's a major concern. Number two, DXY, the biggest indicator, one of the most helpful indicators when it's overall looking at the market, and are we going to see more downside? is what's happening with the dollar. And the dollar is going crazy, people. The dollar this morning, you started off in this bull pennant and you eventually broke out. Again, very, very simple to see this in my opinion. And that's just what I was looking at. These are all things I recommend people look at when they're looking at the market, not financial advice, do your own DD, right? The yield inversion, again, last night, this morning, you push up new highs, 10.05. This is the highest the yields have been since pre-housing crash, right? Not even the housing crash had yields invert this much. The only time they were up this high was back during the dot-com bubble. I'm just saying things are setting up for very similar type of outcomes on the market, specifically with the stagflation as well. So before I let you out of here again, I'm going to give you some stocks that I'm looking at and key areas I'm looking for these to go to. Now, off the gate, my favorite is going to be Tesla. 
As we get into Tesla, I want to tell you exactly why and what's happening here. You're obviously trading in a clear channel back towards that upside. You came back down to our first target, down to the monthly and the weekly around 271. In my opinion, once you break below 280 again, you are going to have almost an immediate push back down towards that monthly 272, possibly even 266. I'd be on the watch for this, but I'm not looking to get into when, right? I'm not looking to get in up here. I'm not looking to get up here. I'm looking to get in when it breaks below 280 right that's where we want to trade this that's what we want to see okay next up we're going to talk about what's happening here as well nvidia continues to be one of our favorite plays here discord's absolutely loving it if this thing gets below and makes new lows below 122 i think there's a high possibility you can come down to 118 117 keep it on your radar absolutely love it J Ream's been killing it with the AMD calls. Just really quick, I want to show you we have been swinging some and doing some scalps as well. But J establishes position for November 60 puts. This is on the 22nd. Fast forward to did to today, those contracts almost up a hundred percent. Maybe even are at near the end of the day. I didn't get another update on this, but they're sitting at 3.5 now. This just shows what's happening and how this is working, looking at a broad scheme. And these are all the stuff I'm mentioning here in the video. Discord's more just hands-on and community, okay? It's not just for signals or this or that. It's for a community so you can get established and surround yourself with people that are trading this market, including myself, J Ream, and then all the other members in the Discord. That's what it's about. But you're, I'm giving a lot of the information here for absolutely free. Just gotta pay attention, people. So overall, that's what I'm looking at. That's what I love. If you have any questions, comment down below. More videos will be coming out. I'll see you tomorrow.